Hello everybody, welcome back to another Motovlog D-Cycle here on a chilly fall afternoon. And what am I doing out in the cold, you might be thinking? Well, I'm on my way down to the dealership. It is time to get my bike service for the 1,000 mile service. Uh, let me know in the comments below, do you guys service your own bike at the 1,000 mile or do you take it to the dealership? I really wanted to take this bike to the dealership mainly because the, the Milwaukee 8, it's still not a proven engine. As in, I know there's still some kinks they're probably working out with it. I mean, my bike's been great, but I really want them to go through the whole thing and make sure that everything looks all right because I just don't want to change my oil at home and not have all the tools to do all the other stuff myself. And then, you know, something goes wrong in, in the spring when I pull it back out. And speaking of the spring, while we're on our way to the dealership, we're going to talk a little bit about winterizing your bike. Is this something you guys do? Do you live in the colder states in, the, in, in America or in Canada or whatever, and do you put your bikes up for the winter for three or four months or so on? Let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious to see what everybody does. I know everybody out in Florida and California and Arizona, New Mexico, all those states, they're, uh, they're riding year round and you guys are extremely lucky. I am jealous. Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> I haven't ridden this bike in like three weeks, man. That feels so good to pull on the throttle. And actually, what's really cool about my dealership, they're letting me do, they're letting me bring in my own oils and my own oil filter. You know, a lot of dealerships, they might be strict on Oh, you have to use Harley branded oil, the Sen3 and their oil filters and so on. Totally fine with my dealership. One of the things I love about Ted's. Now, you might be asking, what type of oils am I going with? Well, I am going for the engine with Mobile One 20W50 Synthetic V-Twin Oil. Another rider. Like it. Hell yeah! I used this stuff in my Sportster, it worked really well, so I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot in the Milwaukee 8 and see what it does. I hear nothing but good stuff about this oil from everybody. And what's good about it is you can use it in all three holes, the primary, the transmission, and the engine. So that's probably what I'm going to start with for the engine on this bike. For the transmission, I'm, I, I'm going with the Lucas version of the 2050 synthetic. This you can also use in all three holes. That's what she said. And I don't know if you guys are real familiar with Lucas products, but they just rave about them in this part of the country. I mean, I went to O'Reilly's and just kind of did some research online. Everybody raves about Lucas oils. And everybody really raves about Redline oil, but uh, really good marks for Lucas. So I wanted to try that in the primary and see how that does. Or actually for the transmission rather. Now for the primary, I'm going to go with a Bell Ray product I found. It is, uh, It was branded on the bottle, Primary Chain Case Lubricant or Oil or whatever. And I know a lot of things with oil is it's a lot of marketing fluff. Just make sure you do your research and find what oils are right for your bike. I'm not a mechanic, so just take whatever I say with a grain of salt. Now, I mentioned before, they're letting me bring my own oil filter in too, which is cool. I heard great things about K&N. So I'm going with a K&N filter. Here's the, uh, the part number for that. And what's cool about this filter is it's got a welded on nut end on the end of the filter. That way, you know, when I'm, I'm ready for the 5000 service, I'll be able to wrench it off real easy. And I do totally plan on doing my own 5000 mile service. I just wanted to get this one done by the dealership. <laughs> All right, well, we're at the dealership. We will continue this discussion later.
All right, guys. Well, the 1,000 mile service is done. Here I am leaving the service center here at Ted's, and everything looked fine. Um, I'm ready to get this puppy home. I'm actually ready to start riding again, so let's do it. Kind of surprised it's actually a lot warmer out now than it was when I got here. God, I love this bike, man. I just, uh, I test rode that FXDR while I was waiting for my my oil change to get done. And, well, my, my thousand mile service, it's more than just an oil change. But, I enjoy this bike a lot more than that FXDR. It's more comfortable. I mean, don't get me wrong, the FXDR was torquey as shit. And it is a gorgeous looking bike. I know a lot of people are gonna find that bike to their appeal. But it was more of a, you know, running around town type of bike. People that want some speed, a little bit better handling and performance. But it wasn't for me, but for, for some other people it probably will be. Now I was looking at that new 2018 Fatboy they had. And it kind of reminded me, it reminded me, every time I see a Fatboy it reminds me of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. If you've seen that movie, that's the bike that Arnold Schwarzenegger rides. Well, I was always... <laughs> I'm always thinking, what if Arnold Schwarzenegger, the beginning of the movie, what if he never asked that motorcycle guy for his boots and his clothes? What if he just asked for the motorcycle and then rode it naked, like the whole movie? He just got a gun over his shoulder and a motorcycle, and he's naked. You know, because he's a, he's a cyborg or, what is it, cybernetic or whatever, and he never, um, he can't feel hot and cold I mean it doesn't affect him I'm sure he could sense it with his uh, robotic abilities but I always wondered that Arnold Schwarzenegger rides the fat boy in the nude something to think about so I'm half tempted to stop at White Castle but it's almost four o'clock and we're gonna have some pizza tonight and if you never had White Castle. I don't know if I would make it home without having not take a shit. Woo! That's always fun. All right, so I'm glad I got down here and was able to get the bike serviced before I put it away. The weather's going to suck here in the next few weeks. 30s, there's no way I'm riding down here in the 30s. I just don't want to. It needed to get done. I am surprised at the number of bikes out here today. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for this video. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon when you do. That way you know videos go up just like this one. Also, hit that thumbs up button while you're at it. Helps out the channel a ton. I'll see you guys on the flip side. You take it sleazy.